Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So should we say goodbye to Betaflight? Well, let's talk about this. All right, so before continuing on, a huge shout out to our sponsor, PCBUA, for sponsoring our open hardware flight controller. This is a great place to have your PCB manufactured as well as assembled with great quality and fast service. So right here, what we're looking at is Neuroflight. And Neuroflight is basically Betaflight ported but with some minor modifi or major modifications. What happens with Neuroflight is they have removed the PID controller in order for an AI to do the PID controlling by itself, which is uh, pretty insane. Now they've gotten two test flights, which I'm gonna show you, but let's quickly talk about some of this here. So they've already prepared the code, which is they've taken the Betaflight code, they've removed the PID controller, and you can still configure your quadcopter through Betaflight, but you won't be, if you adjust the PID, it, it won't do anything because the AI is controlling it. However, it's not ready because you need to also uh, train your model and you can have universal train models. You could also train your model and um, install it and compile your own firmware. Obviously, I'll be making tutorials of all this once I get mine running. Uh, so let's see what they've done here. So first of all, again, they've removed the PID control. They prepared the beta flight firmware so you can just flash it and the configurator also. So that's good right out of the box. The next step would have been is to have some sort of a simulator, which they have actually done which is a huge huge uh just time saved here so they've done a a simulator to simulate flight and if we take a closer look here we'll actually open this in a new tab and let me just explain this i'm also going to show you this running on my pc so what happens with the simulator here is that in the simulator your the the gyro is giving a set point or a set angle that it must go to and the ai is supposed to control each motor and hold that altitude or hold that axis and then just turn into that uh correct axis in the least amount of time so basically like a pid control you want the pid to always equal zero so that's what the ai is doing here it wants to get the gyro to equal zero or the pid to equal zero and again this is just working by ai there is no pid controller and the ai controls each motor output that's what it's doing here and it's reading the gyro sensor data as well as esc telemetry but the esc telemetry is not a must so you can even do it without esc telemetry which is really nice so as you can tell here, it's resetting. So it's getting specific angles to go to and it has to go there as fast as possible. And obviously all this information is being recorded. Now, if we go down here, this is the Jim FC. So let's talk a little bit more about Jim. What does Jim FC mean? So Jim alone is a environment for AIs to learn. There's all kinds of gyms online. There's ones for Super Mario. There's ones for Atari. There's ones for Tetris. There's all kinds of games, hill climb, whatever. And they've taking the time to actually create a gym for uh, the flight controllers, for, for, for our quadcopters here. And if we take a closer look down here, we can see how this is actually working. So if we take a look here, so the, 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 the environment here makes it a lot easier for us to train an AI because most AIs are already pre-compatible or they already have the API in order to talk with the gym software. So they've created the gym FC, which is totally compatible and we need for outputs, which is the observation space. Now the observation space is, is just the AI to see what's really going on and what needs to do kind of. So the observation space has seven outputs here. We have three observations to correspond to the angular velocity error for each axis. And also we have another four observations to correspond to the angular velocity of each motor. The angular velocity of each motor is the RPM, I believe, if you are using the, um, what is it called? If you're using uh, ESC telemetry. Action space. So action space is is how many inputs uh, can can it output into here? And all we need is four inputs to the uh, to the flight to the quadcopter. So the, there are four, as you can tell right there, and each one corresponds to the PWM value of the that's sent to the motor basically so what power level should it be and as you can tell it's from negative one to one but it's not just like negative one zero and one no no it's, these are floats and what that means is if we take here we'll just look up here what that means is it can be anywhere between negative one and negative zero point blah 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 which is a float here uh so you can have any of those obviously negative one being zero and then one being full blown full throttle here and that will be rounded later on so we can make more sense to the quadcopter and all this code is basically much ready once you train an ai you'll be able to um port it but it'll take a little bit of work and this is why i'm planning on starting tutorials on this so if anyone wants to help now setting this up was quite challenging because there isn't much documentation but I finally got it to work. And I'm just, I, I admire this guy's work. It's just, these guys' work. It's, it's absolutely remarkable here. 
And now the environment also will give us another output, which is called reward. Now the reward here is very important because negative one being the worst and zero being the best. And again, it's in float. So it's negative one to negative zero point, you know, and a bunch of numbers after it. So the closer we are to zero, the better we are. And we want to be at zero, but that's theoretically possibly impossible. But the closer we are to zero, that is basically perfect tune every single time. And it'll, you know, do all kinds of crazy good things, you know, no prop wash oscillations and none of that uh, bull crap. So currently we have these three and we also have some other one info, which we're not going to be using here. Uh, which is really nice so if we use this mode here and i'll explain this later on it'll make a lot more sense later on if we use this mode in the gym fc because we can d choose different modes as you can tell here this is a mode this is a mode and this is a mode uh this one as i believe it gives it one second uh at the beginning rest it's a random okay yeah so this mode here is with the esc telemetry so the observation space would be seven so we do still have we get those extra four observations that tell us each motor's current uh rpm um, so we're, we're probably not going to do with the ESC telemetry. I want to do it uh, as default as possible should be these two here. But the first mode here, what will happen is in the simulation, the quadcopter will be at rest and then a random axis, you know, it has to be turned into a specific um, rotation or at the current speed and it must be achieved within one second. One second is quite a long time. But this is just the beginning process. And then we'll also, if we come down here, there's also another way to train it. And we could also modify this later on uh, once actually I understand how everything is running here. Uh, this is really nice. So this simulation runs for 60 seconds and it's continually changes the target angular velocity randomly. Uh, so yeah, so this is, and it's randomly between 0.1 of a second to one second. And obviously, and again, you can change this also. So this is kind of a more realistic type of thing here. Um, so this is really nice here. And this is exactly the same thing as those two, the bottom two here, but without the ESC telemetry, as you can tell here. So that's really nice that this whole simulation, uh, cause I was planning on doing this in real life, but you know, like this, this is just remarkable. This will get you, the, you know, the beginning data here. And especially when this becomes like a group effort or a community driven effort, it, you can see this excel quite dramatically in no time, which is pretty remarkable here. So this is the simulator. And um, and again, here it is if you wanted to see it. Oh, we have to go back. What is this? There we go. So here, I don't know which simulation he's running currently, but as you can tell, it's actually uh, this is the one second repeatedly you have to uh, achieve that specific attitude here. Now the maiden flies. So this guy has two maiden flies, and I and, and the thing is he doesn't fly. So I, from what I understand, he had to bring someone else to fly. And we're gonna take a look at the maiden flights right now. So again, this was ported from beta flight 3.3.3, and the reason for that is because later beta flights were a lot larger, and on F7s we only have one megabyte of flash. So he was able to fit it on a Matic F722 STD, uh, just because the flash memory is insufficient or flash is sufficient. However, it's unknown. Yeah. Okay. So no, both of them, the F7 and the F4s do have enough memory, but he he's never tested it on an F4 to see how much CPU is actually being used. The F7 ran fine here. We're actually going to see that. Um, as you can tell, this is something really nice. Neuroflight is compatible with Betaflight Configurator. However, any modifications to the PID controller and mixer will not do anything as they are not used by Neuroflight because the AI is doing that stuff. So that just, you know, cuts a lot of this really nice because it, you don't have to change anything basically. So that's something that's just super awesome right out of the box. However, we're using an older beta flight, but again, once this gains more attraction, we can see uh, later versions and uh, probably bypass the memory issue with some sort of uh, maybe a light version of beta flight, which can be ported to neural flight. But these, these will be in later topics and once we get to that. So the thing is, the, the, the AI here, uh, I don't know if it'll, yeah, I, yeah, example. So voltage sensor and these types of things. So you can actually even show it, you know, how much voltage is left so it can uh, calculate how much your throttle response is going to be because obviously you lost your voltage. Thus, the, the, the motor is not going to run as strong as it was when it was on uh, full battery. So you can add all these things into the mix, which makes it pretty interesting also. So, um, yeah, this is just pretty remarkable. I mean, uh, I've gotten the simulation to work. I'm just still understanding the code. I am in talks with him. Really nice guy. Um, and I really want to see this project grow bigger and bigger. And I'm going to do my fair share. And I want to spread the word for this project because this has huge potential. And uh, I'm going to start creating the toys of how to set everything up, even though it was actually a pain in the ass to set everything up because nothing was really documented. But, 
that's what I'm here for. I want to I want to share this with everybody, show how people how to set up because set up, setting up is usually the hardest part. And if you know how to code in TensorFlow on this, then it should be smooth sailing for you. And you can easily just start learning. I'll start putting example codes also. Everything obviously 100% open source. Uh, so you can, you know, just work off of my source code. Maybe just a small modification to my code gave the perfect, you know, balance or something. Uh, you just never know with these things. So let's watch its first maiden flight here. And again, this is not him flying. It's his friend from what I understand. And uh, they're using an M Matic F722. So this is pretty, pretty interesting, actually. So let's take a look here. Now, I don't know how good this guy is as a flyer. But as you can tell, he's probably scared and just taking it easy here. But we want to look for oscillations, and obviously it's going to be very difficult with just um, just the FPV feed here. And it's not really great FPV feed that's really going on, but that's totally fine. It can kind of give us an idea. But as you can tell, the first maiden uh, is is beautiful. This is flying. It's not. It's it's literally flying, very nice. Not perfect, possibly. I can't tell, but um, it's flying. It's flying. I mean, what else can I say? It's actually flying. So I'm just very curious. He doesn't do any very uh, sudden moves and um, I just want to watch the yaw axes because from my testing currently I see the yaw axes is always the part that's a bit more difficult to get just right here. So here's a really hard turn. Okay. I want to see if he's fighting it. You know how when you fight a, a, a like a small micro that's underpowered in the wind. So I don't know if this was him trying to turn or he was like fighting it. Uh, I think he's testing the yaw here. That's what I think. I think that's what he's doing. I could be totally wrong here because there isn't much information to go by. And I don't know what he's using. And uh, it's looking pretty good. I mean, obviously, it's flying here. So that that's just says that this is a proven concept and it actually works, which is remarkable. Um, so we don't have to prove if it's actually working or not. All we have to do is train the perfect AI or just give it the perfect environment and uh, just keep playing with this, tuning it, modding it, adding some extra things here. Um, it looks like it's handling pretty well, but if I was him, I wouldn't fly it that close to me Because you know if that thing flips out and again do this at your own risk guys So this is looking good. So the second flight is a bit strange because I, But again in, in this description, he says that uh, there was 30 mile per hour wind uh, gusts of wind Which looks like with well, the way it behaved sometimes you'll see it right now is like kind of like a underpowered micro in wind it's kind of like the diatone two inch in, in, in a bit of wind. It's exactly the same way. But other than that, it's flying pretty good. And again, supposedly this is a very windy day. And this is the reason why I asked for the exact firmware he used in this, because I want to go out and test it for everybody and seeing how well it flies. It's okay. I can, I can break a couple things. I don't have a problem. I have many things to, to use and, and to actually test this because I really believe in this project. It's quite remarkable here. So we can see it flying. We do see some oscillations. I think they look like oscillations. And again, uh, I'll have everything linked down below if you want to check that out. But towards the end of the video is where it gets kind of um, interesting. So I'm guessing he's 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 an okay flyer. That, that's okay. But I just don't know what it, why he's doing what he's doing here. It would make a lot more sense. Because if I were to do this, I would narrate, narrate it uh, or commentate while I'm doing it. And um, towards the end, he actually falls. It kind of okay so that was a fast flip that was really nice did we see a bounce back here let's see uh, we have to go back here let's double check this it looked pretty good but i what do you guys think i think that looks pretty decent that was pretty nice there was a little bit of like i think like a lot of like a little oscillation going on like an over d maybe but it's very difficult to tell this is just all my theory currently so Maybe his battery, he, oh, what's the voltage? Oh, we could even see the voltage, so that doesn't really matter right now. Okay, so I can tell he has, uh, he has. I think he does have uh, ESC telemetry, because that's what's on the bottom left there. I think that's the RPM. Not the RP. yeah, I think it's something like the RPM that's being read currently. So he's kind of punching out here. Towards the end here, this is where it gets kind of weird. It looks like it, he kind of starts fighting it a little bit, but then again, there's 30 mile per hour wind. But even then, that's still pretty good. You can see the, 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 the prop wash on when he was coming down on that. Let's actually take another look at that real quick. So it was it's a little bit further. Yeah, here we go. So here we're going to see the prop wash. Yeah, there was a little bit of prop wash. Okay. And there was, I don't know if that was a little oscillations. So, okay. So here, I don't know if his battery is being too drained here, but it went down too low. But again, it could be just a pilot's, you know, skill level. 
not not saying anything bad, but I'm just you know trying to understand what's really going on here. Yeah, look, did you see that? I I don't think that was him. That was a that was a a weird flip out. You see this? Here we go. It's kind of like what a micro does when you get a little bit of wind, but it did pick itself up. It didn't go too crazy there. And the ending is uh pretty interesting also because actually I've never watched the whole thing, uh, except uh, today right before I started. I just watched a little bit of this video. Okay, so there we had a little weird flip out. It could be due to the wind, but it, well, yeah, this right here. So that was kind of strange. It, he he disarmed, I think, right away. I don't know if the AI has control over the disarming, but real and actually it should. If you disarm, it should tell it to go with zero. So I'm just trying to figure out: did he disarm, or did it just disarm itself? So we're still good. Fifteen point three volts, unless that's not calibrated. What's the flight time? Or does he have flight time? No, he doesn't. Uh, I can't tell. Two minutes. Yeah, I probably ran out his battery. Yeah, I don't think his thing is calibrated. That's for sure. I doubt that his battery is calibrated. So I just want to just watch that again. What do you guys think? Let's see. Where is it? Where he falls? Right here. Boom. It just flips and just falls out. So I don't know. That's pretty strange. So yeah, I'm going to be testing this. Right now, I have never seen so much snow in the current country I'm in. So it's just been um, pretty chaotic. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section and uh, i'll begin the tutorials on this very soon setting it up however when we set this up you will have to run uh linux and for that is because they use the simulator called gazebo 9 and it's only compatible currently on ubuntu and i used i just downloaded ubuntu 16.04 if you don't know how to do that stuff then make sure you search on it i've set it up on my laptop currently um so yeah, and and it, these things, you know, we'll set this up. Uh, let, first, I want to see how many people are interested in this. Then I can make the tutorial on how to set this up. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's um, yeah, you're gonna have to, you're gonna need Linux for this. Unfortunately, I do apologize for that, but that's how they've done it here. And well, that's it, guys. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. I'll have everything linked down below. And well, I'll see you again in the next one. Peace out, guys.